Let's do this. So picking up back where we left off, let's see. Let's see um, what kind of issues we're having. So one of them, we were having an issue with this avatar uploader class. But 90% sure that's not like a Rails thing. Um, and so what we're going to do is comment that one out. Uh, pro tip, so I was having that bcrypt problem. If you were having the same one, uh, doi, anytime you, anytime you change a dependency or change something in the environment, what do you need to do? You need to restart the server. It'll catch your code changes live. It will not catch environment and dependency changes live. I didn't. You may have. Uh, so, a thing to keep in mind. Cool. So, uh, next thing. Let's see. I'm trying to make a new user. Um, so I do that. Cool. Otherwise, it works if I comment out that uh, that buddy. That is one hundred percent built into Rails. You should be able to do that. Make sure that yours looks like this. Presence is like absolutely built in. You can also try calming them out. Uh, okay, but that's one of them. That lets us uh, create a user. So let's say I want to delete that user I just made. I'd imagine it would, because now you're not validating anything. Okay, we'll get there. So you sh that shouldn't be running when you. C there you go. All right, with me? Not tech-wise, attention-wise. Cool. So um, let's say uh, okay. So I made this ID three. Let's say I want to delete it. Oh no, uninitialized constant, uh, application controller, JSON web token. Hmm, interesting. So uh, I was a little bit curious about this on the way when we were starting this. The folder that they had us put it in was App lib JSON web token. Uh, Damon, young Damon, helpfully pointed out that uh, we already have a lib folder that is in the root directory that we could put that in. That's pretty cool. And that's where I put mine. Hmm, but it can't find it. How do you think we approach a problem like this? How do you, okay, so I saw Ahmed yesterday use a delightful metaphor for how Ruby approaches this, uh, this class business. We got a great big bucket.
and we load the user model class into this, and we load the controller class, and all these classes get loaded into the bucket, and once they're in the bucket, they can all see each other. Hmm. How come we're not able to see that this new token one? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if I move that folder, or that file that is in lib JSON web token, if I just throw it in the app folder in the root and restart the server. What now, dad? Still can't find it. Hmm. I want you, as a class, to look up class auto-loading in Rails. We're going to spend three minutes on this. I want you to report back. Go! This isn't a real specific thing, by the way. Uh, most OOP languages have a concept of auto -order. Cool. Who would like to share any ahas you had 
about auto loading. I take away your furrowed brows, you want more time to read, so I'm going to give it to you. A little bit more reading time. All right, back with me. Uh, let's uh, let's team read this. Priscilla, uh, will you read this starting right here? And then give an example. Let's pause and like digest this a little bit. So requiring the location of each auto-loaded constant to be specified in advance. That's how Ruby works. That was, uh, think about our environment.rb file, where uh, you had to name every single one of the classes you were going to use. In contrast to that, Rails has a simple convention, it's kind of Rails' game, right? <coughs> that maps constant names to file names. Now, think about how we use that word map, too, right? Same number, some kind of transformation. Constant name is mapped to a file name. Nesting corresponds to directories, and constant names are underscored. Sit with that for a sec. Martin, you please keep reading from here. For given constant, this is the first file name is going to search for a number of auto-load tasks. And determined by the auto-load tasks, the number is not known. By default, the general search searches in all immediate subdirectories of the last directory. Initial tasks are listed. And then they give an example of what adding something to that would look like. Let's sit with this for a sec, too. So what's this saying? Break it down into human words. It goes into specifically the subdirectories of app. It doesn't look in app, which is why I couldn't find it when I moved it there. 
it does look inside controllers, inside models, inside of each of the subdirectories there. So that's an important thing. What else can we add to that? What are ahas are we having about this? Yeah. Indeed, this autoload paths, that's an array of directories. We got a, we mapped our class names to file names, and this is where we're going to look for them. So, this is the kicker. If we have an array with app models and lib, and we look up JSON underscore web underscore token, uh, or sorry, if we look up camel case JSON web token as a class, it's gonna first look in this folder to see if it has that snake cased as a file name in it. Doesn't find it there, cool. I got another place I can look that up. And it's gonna look for it there. The first one it finds, it loads in. That's auto-loading. When you use a class that you don't have loaded in already, it's going to try to resolve that and look for them in those places. All right, I want you to think about how you would explain this at a lame party that you go to. A bunch of people who are like, auto-loading, huh? We didn't do that back in my C++ days. How does auto-loading work? I want you to think about how you would answer that question. Think to yourself. Cool. I want you to share your answer with a partner. Two, Danik is with me. Two, 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 two. Go. All right, everybody back with me. Well done, thank you, Arlene. Okay, so I need to hop into this config and make sure that I've got that lib folder showing up. And wouldn't you know it, got a real handy way to make that happen. Just from context, any guesses what Rails root is? So yeah, we combine that with that to make a new path. Neat. Let's hop over to config application and let's pattern match. So application, Rails application. I think we're in the right spot here. So I've got config auto load paths rails dot root dot join. Lib. I'm gonna move my uh, my file back.
I'm gonna restart my server. Yep. Something it didn't like. So it is. Good catch. All right, so it's working. Let's see if I at least get a different error. Cool. What happened? Oh, there's something there. I, uh, I created that user a second ago. Why is this unauthorized? I'm not logged in. What does logged in mean with Jots? Let's go back to the diagram. How does it know whether or not I'm logged in? That's it. You're walking around with a key. This server <coughs> has no concept of you being logged in. All it knows is whether or not your key works. There's a different kind of authentication called session auth. Uh, I think there's some labs on this also. It works very differently. And it very much has like a database table full of who's logged in right now. So, if we want to be able to do that, we need to present a valid token. How do I get a valid token? Current password for that user, where, how? I don't have a front end. I'm just doing this through Postman. Okay, so this action, neat, and it's going to use that uh, our authenticate method. So I'm posting that, and I want to give it an email. Cool. I want to give it a password. Cool. Let's see. Server error. Let's see what this one is. Authentication controller on line 15. So it got to here. And it looks like. I've got a syntax problem. If you see it, shout it out. But I uh, think I dropped a parenthesis or something. <coughs> I got it. It's up in my if. Cool, again. Hey, what do you know? Look who's got a token now. Pretty dope. So let's pause here for a sec. There's a couple things I want to point out in this token. Like, this is three different sections. Any guesses what the thing that separates the sections is? The dot. Section one, section two, section three. Every jot has three sections to it. The rest of it is what we call base 64 encoded. What's a base 64 encoding?
This is like vaguely mathy. But if we're doing numbers, zero through nine, we call that base 10 encoding. What you got, Colin? Correct. It is a super dense way to store information. It's like having 64 characters available. So we have 0 through 9, A through Z lowercase, A through Z uppercase, and I believe the underscore counts also. But this is uh, just an encoding. It's an encryption. Like, there's no scheme to it. It just, we can pig Latin translate back and forth. To wit, if I take my token, and go to the Jot website, and you scroll down a little bit, it'll let you paste a Jot in here and read what it says. Hey, what do you know? User ID free. That was my user ID. Be slick. Here's the coolest part of this, though. You might say, all right, well, if I'm just taking the uh, uh, ID out of the token, what stops me from just changing that to one or four or whatever, logging into someone else? First section, second section, third section. Any guesses? This one's hard. But this is probably the basis behind all modern encryption in off. If I change this to anything else, the signature that I get back is wildly different. And so what I do on the server, I check the token and I go, okay, well, let's uh, hop over to the, uh, so I logged in. What it's going to do is it's going to take a look at my jot and it's going to see the signature and it can tell whether or not I tampered with the payload. If I change anything in the payload, it makes a different signature. And that signature was made with my secret, which nobody knows but me. So I can actually trust the data that I put in a payload even though I can pig Latin translate it and just get it back just like this. But I can also trust that user didn't tamper with it because if they did, they get a different signature. Pretty fucking cool, honestly. Ben. Um, every time you log in, there's a token change. Uh, every time you log in, it refreshes your token. Yeah, it just extends the expiration date. Same payload. Yes, the token's going to look differently. Pretty fucking cool. All right, let's see if it works. If I take that token and I go back to my delete request, how would I, how do I give it my key? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bearer token. Cool. I can just pop in that token right there. 
And let's see what happens if I try to do this now. User not found. I think that's what I wanted to happen. Um, let's try getting users. Nope, three's in there. All right, we might have some debugging to do. But it didn't block me out. Give me the other error. That's a good thing. Let's take a look at that delete request again. OK, so I got my token in there. I'm trying to delete user 3. It says the user's not found. So if I'm debugging this, where do I look? How about the code? Let's see what throws that error. So login's fine. Maybe that user's controller. Find user. Hey. That thing right there, right? Yeah. I was wondering what that was. I don't think this is a thing. Um, how about I do this like for real? Oh, not a trick question. Just dot find? Lizzie, what do you think? Okay, so if I do dot find, ooh, it's probably not dot find, but close. What is dot find? Try to look something, look for something by ID, always, only. If I want to look up a user by something else, I have to use find by, but I don't think it's find by username. I don't think that's a thing. That. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. hey now. All right, let's try it. I like the way you think, Damon. You had a good brain. That's right, I called it underscore username. So if I delete users Kyle Coberly 3 or whatever, what I call it? Kyle Coberly 2. Still user not found. All right, let's try doing find by and then username. Let's see if we can find it then. It's not stored that way in the database. Actually, how would I check how it's stored in the database? Rail C, got an even faster way than that. Schema. Take a look at the schema file. No underscore. That's just what I'm calling it internally. All right, let's see if that does anything. Okay, still can't find it. All right, this happens to you. What do you do? Google for it. Uh-oh, it's probably not going to go. Um, yeah, I'm looking for Kyle Corbley 2, and my database can't find it. What could, like, stop things, let me inspect, play around with a little bit? Pry? It's exactly like Pry, except it's a little bit different than Rails. Okay. Bye bug. So I can throw a bye bug in there, and it's kind of like a Rails' version of Pry. Ooh, also, check this out. I actually get a bunch of information from the console about this request we made. So that's all good. Brand username. Oh, 
Oh, interesting. Hmm. All right, I'm going to throw the buy bug in, and let's take a look. Oop, it didn't hit that. How strange. Do you think it's this? Got it. But it looks like it's like kind of not taking that params override that we uh, that we did for resources. I'm kind of curious why it. Oh, I'm telling it to throw an error. That's probably why it's not hitting the buy bug. There we go. All right, so now I'm in buy bug, and if I want to see user, no user found. All right, what was params ID? All right, um, user find by, uh, actually, what if I did user all? I got username Kyle Cobley, username Kyle Cobley2. This looks all right. User find by username Kyle Coberly2. Nothing. How strange. This is. Oh, oh. This is probably this is expecting a hash. There we go. So it's like that. All right. I'll throw my uh, my error back in. Oh, and then get out of my bug. Okay. Hey. Two or four no contact. You know what that means? So if I look back at my list of users couldn't find a user with ID 3 oh you know why because I'm trying to authenticate that request for the user that doesn't exist anymore so I get rid of my token oh it shouldn't need one to list them oh, does it did we authenticate that we did we authorize every request except creation. Pretty dope. Let's see if it still works. I'm going to make a new user. Uh, I'm going to call this one Aaron. Aaron at flatironschool.com. Aaron's password is Aaron, all lowercase. We're going to Verify that there. A A Ron. Cool. So I make a new user. Password's too short. Aaron, the password's too short. By the way, what through this uh, what through this error? The model validation. Good. All right, so it changes to Aaron Aaron. Nice. I have successfully created a user. What's this password digest? It's not the token. Kind of. It's the hash of the password, not the same thing as an encryption. That's a topic for a different day. But it is, we mangled up a password so we weren't saving the actual password. And it looks like this. Yes. Cool. We'll be bugging a sec. Let's just make sure that we're conceptually on board with this and we'll do a little bit of debugging for a bounce. So 
I don't want to store Aaron Aaron in there because when hackers break into my database, now they know the password that Aaron reuses all over the place. So I have this hash. I take Aaron Aaron, I mangle it all together. It actually can't be reversed. You can't crack a hash and get the password back. It doesn't work that way. So when I send Aaron Aaron to log in, it mashes it up the exact same way and compares these two. And they should be the same. All right, so I go to log in. And I'm logging in with my username, Aaron, and my password, Aaron, Aaron. Oops. Called him Aaron, right? Debug with me. What am I looking for? Oop. Anybody see it? Email too. So I called his Aaron at FIS.com. And I get a token back. Cool. I might not need the username, actually. And cool. So I want to delete this user that I just made. So I go over here, go to my authorization header, give it my new token, and it deletes. Conceptual questions for reducing debugging. So we were faking out the browser piece, but hopefully you have some idea of how we might do this exact same thing. All we're doing is just sending data. Nothing special there. We made a post request to the auth route, sending our username and password. It verified our password and generated a token. Gave us the token back. We send that token on subsequent requests. It validates the token. Gives us our stuff. That's it. That's token based auth. Questions? Mm -hmm. Going to the same lane party, I don't know why you've done these things. Somebody asks you, token based off, I'm pretty familiar with session based off. Um, token based off, pretty new fangle. How does that work? And I don't give you the benefit of looking at this diagram. Think through what the steps are. What are the steps in token based off? Let me get volunteer to uh, recall them for me. Not bad, huh? 
Cody, why don't you get us started? First step. Mm -hmm. And what are we sending along with it? Yeah. Whatever we need to authenticate with. Username, password. This system had us in our email also. An additional password. So I'm sorry for why. Um, okay. So, cat, what does that give us back? We give it the right stuff and it gives us. Generates a token. Sends it back to us. I gave you the correct credentials. I'm going to use my credentials every time now. So, you have to keep a friend now with any, anything ready to authenticate on. Okay, I have the key. Joe, what do I do with the key? After I've got back, uh, I need to do something that requires me to log in. What do I do? Well, I don't do that in the browser. I don't have the facility for that. So, what do I need to do so that can happen? I have these literal keys in my pocket. Uh, does they have keys, Candy? Cool. Thank you. Okay, so what I did. Questions about that process? Cool. So give me some examples of, actually, let's do this. Let's break here. I'm going to hang out for a sec, and anybody who wants help debugging any specific issues in their implementation of this, uh, let's talk. Thank you very much.